This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Jacob, my perfume channel, where we get to talk all things fragrances, perfumes, and scents. Ha! Now, uh, today we're going to do my top 10 perfumes for autumn or fall, for the autumn slash fall season. Now, I know that top 10 lists are not everyone's thing, or top 5 lists, or top anything lists, but this is a peculiar one because... Autumn to me is a very strange season. There's a, you know, there's a bit of summer still in autumn. You could have really summery warm days. You could have snow in autumn. You could have a feel of spring in autumn. You can also have autumn in autumn. So it's kind of like a season in which you go through the moods and the motions. And it's also the harvest season where you harvest, you collect everything that you've been growing so passionately throughout the year. It's a moment also to recollect your thoughts and to kind of start thinking about what you've done throughout the year, these 365 days that you've been on this planet that's been turning around the sun a full year. Like it's you're you're coming slowly full circle. So it's a selection of perfumes that makes you think, it it makes you reflect, but it's also a reflection of the things that you've experienced thus far. So autumn is a very it's my favorite season of the year, by the way. So anyway, if you haven't already like my content subscribe to my channel here on youtube and a thank you to all my co-watchers and viewers who are with me in the chats i live stream every saturday so everybody's welcome to join me on my main channel my super day of main channel where i live stream most of the videos that then i upload to all my other channels this being the perfume channel here so thank you to my co-chatters who have already been informed what the topic is going to be so maybe you guys know or you could guess <laughs> now i know people say guess in the comments down below which perfume give me your top 10 i want to read the ones that your top 10 are for autumn but the guessing game happens now live because we are live uh in the chats so let me see autumn is the best is jack lampustrov says here in middle east it's still very hot 40 degrees that's super hot uh, <laughs> Black Noise says, okay, Deco making a perfume video, gets wallet ready. <laughs> Robert says, Deco is going to do a spin and do TikToks of him. That I no, 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 you're not going to have me do that. But anyway, so let's begin with the first one. Um, morning. Good morning. Uh, it can be cool morning a fresh morning a refreshing morning and i still love my lavender throughout summer but also autumn and even in its current formulation huge fan of dolce gabbana pour homme eau de toilette i got a 200 ml bottle here now just warning you um shiseido has left the building they're not doing dolce gabbana perfumes anymore so if you like this particular formulation of Dolce Gabbana pour homme, stock up because who knows what trash is coming later um yes Jack this is a thick bottle <laughs> Robert says these 10 perfumes better be panty droppers otherwise I don't want any of them <laughs> Cha uh, Jesus oh Dolce Gabbana pour homme, love that one yes this one is beautiful 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 even in its current concentration you can check out my review of this one on my channel but the Procter & Gamble formulation before this one was really not good, you guys. But the Shiseido or DPI Prestige formulation is really good. I really, really, really enjoy it. So I'm very, very happy to have it. And this one is cooling and warming at the same time. You know those with golden rays of light in those early autumn days when you, you see that summer is gone, but it, there's still that warmth in the air. Oh, that's when this one smells that the tobacco leaves with the lavender it's a great fougere fragrance that the tobacco in here has that dried tobacco smell as if the tobacco was drying in the warm early autumn days mixed with lavender really really good so from there you know my number two for those autumn days when it rains and the sky is really very gray and damp there's that damp mood and atmosphere around you. That's when I go for uh, Paris Edinburgh by Chanel from the Les Zoo range of Chanel. This one, 
I've used it in summer. I have reviewed this one as well on my channel. In summer, it doesn't really hit me as much as it does now. This one right now, when the days get shorter and colder and everything gets a bit more moist, wet, humid, gray. Oh, this one is so good. And it has a memory of summer in it, but it already smells of autumn. It's really, really good. It's a beautiful link between summer and autumn, but being more autumn than summer. This one is really good in autumn, you guys. Mm. <laughs> Jack Dean says, oh, number two, expecting a poopy note. Oh, Edinburgh. Hey, queen, been a while. <laughs> Powdery soapy lavender with a touch of Italian bad breath says Jesus about Dolce Gabbana. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so this is my number two for autumn. It's really, really delicious. You know, when there's a slight rain, a little mist in the air, and you spray this one, oh, it enhances it. The, the misty air enhances the smell. Number three, we're going to go into incense territories. We're going to go into Avignon. Uh, Comme des Garçons Incense Series 3 Avignon. It's a beautiful cold incense with... It's a very cold incense, but at its core, it has potential of heating up because you got to burn incense ultimately. So there's that potential of, of a hot core, but surrounded by cool, austere religious devotion to a perfume and to a mood. Very autumn. Very autumn. It makes you think. It makes you ponder. It makes you reflect. Uh, and, and it's just a gorgeous perfume all day round. This one doesn't have a morning, evening, afternoon. Doesn't matter. And has really good longevity. Lasting power over eight or ten hours. It lasts you almost all day, really. Now, number four is interesting because it almost doesn't fit the bill, but I put it in anyway for those days in which it's getting really too cold for me, and I do miss summer. But I don't want summer back, because I don't like when it's too hot outside. But for those days when I reminisce about summer, but I don't really want it back, I just want the zhuzh of it back, that's when I go for humanity. Believe it or not, this is my kind of memory of summer perfume. Well, at least this year it is. I mean, of course, you know, my selection, it's like now these are my favorites. This is what I would go for. Um, if you ask me in a year from now, who knows, right? But this one, slight, delicate, salty breeze, artificial as a mofo. I think this is the most artificial <laughs> of the perfumes I have in my selection. But it has um, a Zhuzhi summer vibe and that saltiness brings us back to the sea or to the ocean. It's a good one. It's like a memory of summer to hold with you while you're in autumn. And it's a good version of the memory of summer to use in autumn. That was number four, right? Right. Okay, number five. <laughs> Any guesses? What is in this little orange box? Is it my crop? My mess crop? <laughs> no, it's not. So I took this box out of my archives just to show you how I used to purchase the Hermesance range. I don't even know if they still do them like this, but you could choose four and they package them in, this, in, the, in their cute little pouches, little dust bags. You get four little 15, four times 15 milliliter bottles and you get to choose whichever you want. Um, I'm going to take the one that I choose for autumn. It's right here. I prepared it. And it is delicious. Poivre Samarkand. Okay. It's really hard to see the text because it's such a tiny little inscription there. So I have three of these bottles. <laughs> and the fourth one in this box, I'm not going to tell you because it's not in the list, but... This one is really, really soothing. It, it, 
it announces the arrival of colder days, but it soothes you. It tells you it's all going to be fine. You're going to survive autumn. You're going to survive winter. You've had a successful year. You're going to be great. You're going to do good. Yes, Jack, these are great sizes for purses. They're, they're just perfect. And, and they get these beautiful, high quality, you know, Hermes is good with all they do. These pouches are just divine, darling. And it just kind of, each one of them gets their own little tiny pouchlet. You can tie them and voila, there you go. So I don't know if they still do these sets, uh, but when they used to do them, I would only buy these perfumes through these sets and sometimes with friends. If I just needed to, you know, purchase just one, I would get together with three or four friends and we would buy a box together and everybody buys their own bottle. It's a great way to share and to save money as well. I hope Hermes still does it. If they don't do it, sorry for them because this was a great thing. Yeah, the pouchlet, like noise. It's a little pouchlet, little baglet, pouchlet. <laughs> I used to have this Escada perfume that was perfect for fall winter, says DSD. Hmm, which one was it? Yeah, Jesus says, uh, a pretty inexpensive way to try out the Armesance line. It's about 130 euro for four times 15 mil. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, orgy buying, right, Jack? Yeah, exactly. But Poivre Samarkand of the set is warm, but soothing and soft and delicate. It's like a cashmere Hermes blanket. That doesn't make you sweat, but it breathes on you. It's really that good. So this is uh, this is my number five for autumn. It's really, really perfect for autumn. Now we're moving into kind of more colder days. Um, as autumn, you know, as, uh, ah, let's do Halloween. You know, I've been thinking about this. So autumn shifting towards mid, late autumn, that's Halloween, basically. Chalimar, souffle de parfum, which doesn't mean souffle. This is not food. Souffle is like a whisper. It's a whiff or a whisper of, of the perfume. And boy, actually, late October till mid-November, that's when this one hits the spot for me like no other. Oh, it's just, it's just that good. Not so much so in summer, though. Um, this is an autumn fragrance. It's an autumn fall fragrance like like no other it's really really warm enough slightly spicy we're not it's not going into pumpkin spice territories not at all it has the dna of shalimar but it fluffs it up elevates it to a soft caress a whiff a whisper of the warmth that shalimar will deliver in winter this is the autumn autumn version so it, it has that almost like a nostalgia for winter, for snow, but the snow isn't there yet. But you're in the harvest season. It's a beautiful fragrance and I love it in autumn. So what, I don't even know what number we're at now. We did uh, four, five, six. We did six. No, how many did we do? One, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, six. Okay, seven more uh lavender now this is i started with one lavender at the beginning for like the beginning of autumn where you still feel summery and that would be dolce gabbana pour homme but then there's another lavender mixed with vanilla that i adore which travels throughout all of autumn from the beginning of autumn till the bitter end because the vanilla warms up the lavender and the lavender in the pure concentration, the pure extrait version is just the best lavender I've ever smelled in my life. And that would be Chanel's Jersey. Okay. Jersey by Chanel, the pure perfume. The eau de toilette or eau de parfum will do as well. I'm not a fan of the eau de parfum, but they don't do the eau de toilettes anymore. But if you can get the pure perfume, this thing is bomb, bomb. It's just warm, soothing, uh, the highest class lavender essence you can get. It's like an oil almost. It's, and it goes on for hours and hours and you just, you're in heaven when you smell this one and it soothes you throughout. This one is like a turtleneck sweater. Okay, if we're gonna compare all of these weird garments, outfits, blankets, this is a turtleneck sweater. Soft and fluffy one, not a scratchy one. Not the one where you're like, ah, oh, pulling it off your neck. No, this one, hmm. 
so subtle and so sublime. Six, right? No, this was seven. What am I at? Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six. We did seven. Now we're going to do eight. Eight Bois d'Argent. Now, Bois d'Argent is, to me, a memory of whatever the bees created in terms of honey throughout the summer and spring. You harvest that in autumn and you get the honey for Bois d'Argent. Ah, oh. it's that elevated and silver forest, you know, it has a cooling effect as well. It also announces winter. It's announcing the arrival of snow, but it's the type of honey that you blend into your tea and you hold your cup and it's warm and you're all cuddling up on your sofa, watching a movie or a TV show you love. And then you're sipping that Mm, delicious honey that you've you know there's this other ingredient uh, it's super rare i think it's called silver needles or something like that it's like a tea i guess from china i don't know from where really uh because i'm not a big tea drinker so i don't know all my teas very well but they look like silver needles and uh it tastes similar to how this smells i know that that particular thing is not in here but um it's a vibe okay it can smell very cold out of the bottle, but when it warms up on your skin, when you spray it up on your skin, it heats up and it becomes a delicious, luscious, curdling and cuddling honey. It's one of the best honey perfumes out there. It's great for autumn. Bois d'Argent, the silver forest. Number nine is another Chanel. And oh boy, this one really takes the cake for me. Le Lion de Chanel. Le Lion de Chanel is so skanky. Um, hay. It's pure hay. It's, it's a barnyard from the 80s, taken and placed into the 2000s and 20s with the modern day synthetics that we have, which are much more sophisticated than the ones we had in the 80s. So it's like a 80s powerhouse catapulted into niche territory with an emphasis on the hay, a role in the hay. Again, very harvest, very Halloween, very, you know, going through the, the hay ride, the hay stack ride, the scary ride through the hay barn or whatever. Very harvest, almost Thanksgiving type of heft of having to deal with family, everybody uniting, seated together, eating together, dr family drama together. That's what this one does. And then, you know, each part of the family takes their girlfriends and boyfriends also to the dinner uh, if they're traveling from across other countries, because not every country celebrates Thanksgiving, obviously. So for those of the fiancés, girlfriends, boyfriends that don't need to be with their families for Thanksgiving because they don't celebrate Thanksgiving, right? So they come with you to your family house and then uh, your brother and sister also take their lovers, whatever. And you know, shit can go down on that Thanksgiving dinner because then like, I'm like, where, where did my girlfriend go? And I'm like, oh, where did my boyfriend go? And then like, they're in the bathroom together. So family drama type of Le Lion de Chanel with the barnyard attached to the house where the main dinner is happening. There's a lot of Fiddlin' diddlin' in the barnyard with Lillian de Chanel for Thanksgiving. And it's dirty, but in a very, very good way. And it really blossoms just right in the humidity, you know, in, in, in rainy, cooler days in autumn. This one is not the best for summer. Autumn is, is where it's at with this one. Um, it delivers a story. It has a poetry to it, very specific, very precise. Olivier Paul's really marked his territory like a lion would, you know, lift a leg and pee on the corner of Chanel perfume land and say like, Psst, this is me, batches. That's number nine. And number 10, what do you guys think? Who takes, who takes the cake for number 10? Um, <laughs> Of course, it had to be something very dark and very menacing and very forecasting of, of the death of nature as, as winter comes. And in the depths of autumn, in the last day of autumn, 
as we start to officially announce the arrival of, you know, uh, Christmas and the New Year, and we burn the logs in the fireplace. Ah, oh, we burned the whole fireplace. The smell of that old chimney, that old house that is burned down. It's the house of our ancestors. It has a smell. It smells like Onwa. So this is my number 10. And I gotta say, you know, this year has been the year of Onwa for me. I've been loving it, loving it, loving it. The Eau de, the Eau de, the Eau de Parfum. Man, I can... <laughs> it just gets me every time. And now that you see I've been using it, this is... I got this bottle last December, so... And I have a lot of perfumes, you guys. And and in half a year to have used up over 100 mil means that I really love this one and that I've been using it throughout the whole year. Um, it's just that good. And I do prefer it to the Eau de Cologne because Eau de Cologne is... Um, very, very strong on the Immortel. Uh, and this one is a bit more delicate, even though it's an Eau de Parfum. Huh? It's a little bit more suave. But that suaveness is what makes it really good, because you could just overspray it all the time. And it delivers nuances upon nuances upon nuances. Some days it's very elusive. You spray it on 10 minutes later, you can't even smell it on your arm anymore. And you go like, what the hell? But then there are those other days where you spray it on and like 10 hours later, it's still going strong. And you're like, wow, what? How? It's very moody. Very, very moody. And sometimes you smell the fire in here. Sometimes you smell the licorice. Sometimes the lavender. Sometimes the mortel. Sometimes it smells like a burning mansion. Sometimes it smells like wood that was used in the Baroque time and it's still in a building. And you smell that old wood that has absorbed smoke and smells throughout centuries. It goes, it takes you places, and it also smells like a McGriddle. Sometimes it smells like a McGriddle. <laughs> yeah, McDonald's McGriddle. It does have that pine um, maple syrupy, not pineapple. Forget about the pineapple. I want to say maple syrup, like a maple syrup meets licorice, meets other spices. Immortel is in here, so obviously curry. You know, it's a note. I don't, on my skin, it doesn't develop the curry tone. A lot of people mention on their skin, it smells like food. Uh, not on me. So I guess I'm really lucky there. Although I wouldn't mind it smelling like food either, but. Uh, that was my number 10, you guys. Eau de Parfum of Eau Noire. I know it's a limited release. I know you can only get it in France and some European countries. If, you know, if you're in the States, get some friend to get it for you uh, in Europe and then you know, fly it over to you, <laughs> you know, you got to start some sort of, um, I don't know, underground <laughs> delivery of Onoir, because, you know, Dior, they're playing games with us. They're also, they've also kind of chopped off Dior, Homme, the original. You can also get it in some countries. Um, so, <laughs> you know, this is going to be like the years of American prohibitionism with the alcohol. We're, we're having the same happening to Onwa. You gotta, under the table, deliver it, you know, to friends. So this was it. Um, thank you so much, Y Pal says, just tuning in, loving the hair. Thank you. Thank you so much. So you guys, um, yeah. So, um, ah, Susie Q says, sorry, but I had to go get a Big Mac. Mm, I would love a McGriddle right about now. So those are my top 10, you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below what your top 10 are, what you think about my selection. Does this make any sense to you? Do you have any of these perfumes? Do you enjoy them? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Why do you like them? Why do you not like them? You see, the conversation about fragrances, it can go on forever and ever and ever, really. It's a lot of fun. It's like playing cards. It's like tarot cards. Like, which perfume are we going to pull out now? And what does it mean for our future? <laughs> hmm. So, yeah, I had to leave before the perfume review. Oh, you're back now. Well, welcome back. Just in time. <laughs> Just in time for a goodbye. Uh, Jack says, maybe we could also do a top 10 Halloween fragrances? Reading Mama, Jack, Reading Mama. Letty says, Deco, great list. Thank you so much, Letty. I love portrait of a woman, says Suzy Q. You mean portrait of a lady? By um, Frederic Mal, you mean, Suzy Q? Or is there another perfume called a portrait of a woman as well? I don't know. Y you let me know. 
Rich Mitch says great list. Oh, thank you, Rich Mitch. Thank you for sticking around, even though you hate the lists in general. Barbara O'Brien says top 10 ouds. Cha. I'm going to let Rich, Rich Mitch do the top 10 ouds, by the way. Rara says definitely going to be enjoying my opium parfum and Floris Edwardian bouquet. Scent of the day, by the way. Oh, Rara, how sophisticated. You know that opium almost made the cut for my list here, but last minute I was like, you know what? It's still maybe too warm for opium for me right now, but you never know where opium could find its way and sneak its way back in. Ollie says, hey, hey, oh, hey, welcome, welcome, Ollie. <laughs> oh, you're drinking out of your Super D glass? Oh, thank you so much. Ollie just got her Super Dacob merch glass. Check out my merch under www.superdacob.com. Thank you for reminding me, Ollie, so I can plug in my merch. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ollie, don't wash it in the dishwasher. It doesn't like dishwasher, only hand wash uh, if, if possible. Susie Q says, oopsie, I said the wrong name. Yeah, you meant portrait, portrait of a lady, um, right? Jack says, ooh, you do divination through perfumes instead of the cards, yes. You pull the Dolce Gabbana, cha your ratchet. You're gonna be a hoe. Next year, you'll be a hoe. <laughs> and hoes will come to you. <laughs> your, your, <laughs> your hoedom is safe. Rich Mitch says, I don't think I have 10 ouds. I don't think I have them either, because you know we're not big oud fans. Um, what? Oh, Catherine says, still serious hot here, so my list is a bit different. Yeah, Catherine, I mean, in, in heat times, we still stick to summer selections, of course, for sure. I mean, you're not going to go for Le Lyon in the middle of summer, or you're also not going to really go for an incense -y fragrance. I mean, you could, but maybe Jassalmer is a good one for summer, although Jassalmer is really good for spring. But you're not going to go for Chalimar Souffle de Parfum in the middle of summer. It could get a little bit cloying, you know what I mean? Yes, WMDI Inc. Yes, I do sell these. Uh, I sell mugs. I sell mugs and glasses. I mean, this is kind of like a big glass. There's two versions of them. On www.superdacob.com. This is the Cheeky and the Hedgehog Totally Dacob glass. And then we have the classic Super Dacob glass. By the way, let me hydrate while we're at it. Hmm. Oh, this is always good. I always forget to hydrate when I make these videos. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.